Right, what's going on, boys? Welcome back to the Pick Up the Fork podcast. We're here with our special guest, Mitch McDonald, today, and that's going to be a good episode. Yeah, he's Thanks got a lot of he's got, yeah, he's got a lot of knowledge, but like he's a personal trainer, so he's got a lot of knowledge with different different aspects of the gym. So it's nice to have you all in here. Sure, so, I appreciate you having me, guys. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming nice on, man. So, finally. Yeah. Um. So, like, I'm just. Uh, how did you get into like working out and everything, just in general? Uh, so basically, I, I was a high school athlete, like I'm sure pretty much everybody was. Um, I really, really liked playing sports. Um, but as as I got better at sports, the need for training kind of increased as well. And then as I trained more and more, I, I tend to like training more and more. Yeah. Um, then in grade 11, I blew up my knee, broke my knee playing football. Um, and I was pretty much sidelined for the rest of that season. Um, and then just through f- physiotherapy and stuff like that, I got more involved in kind of the scientifically based aspects of training. Um, and that just piqued my interest more than actually playing the sports I was training for. Um, yeah. Took off from there. That's awesome. Man. And so I know you're kind of like in a body, but like, have you competed? I haven't. I've done three full preps now. Um, and my two first ones were, uh, they were canceled due to COVID. Um, so my first one in 2020 was canceled for COVID. My second one in 2020 was also canceled because of COVID. Um, then my third one I started prep for, and then I broke my leg two weeks into prep oh, and wow. back in November. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a rough, uh, yeah. rough go of competing for me, but eventually I'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. So like after you started working out, like how'd you get into the industry of like being a personal trainer and like, getting on social media and stuff? Like what pushed you into doing that? Honestly, it was just, I saw every, it, it was primarily financial based first i wanted to make money off of doing something that i really enjoyed doing um and then trying to get better at that i realized that nobody's going to pay you if you don't provide something something yeah, different exactly. to the table um so then to a couple of my first first coaches uh randy madsen and Corey james really pushed me to learn more about kind of what i was trying to do um and then through that i pursued some ed- post-secondary education and then it took off from there yeah, so what do you do for post-secondary education? Because I'm, I'm just interested in that for just for myself because I'm not really yeah. sure. Um, so I'm currently taking my – I'm t- taking a double major. I'm going into my fourth year right now. Um, so I'm taking a double major in pre-med kinesiology and biochem. Um, so then hopefully after that, I'll write my MCATs and maybe go to med school if I'm lucky. That's, it. that's awesome, yeah. Should be cool. Should be cool. I think that's one thing, especially in, like, the coaching, like, bodybuilding coaching, like, personal training industry is, like, like you need to kind of stand out, you know? You can't just – like and if you have all that knowledge you're gonna stand out for sure yeah for, for sure for sure and there's definitely there's a bunch of guys up there right now that that have way more knowledge than me um so i'm just trying to trying to provide a little bit of something different maybe a different take on it um yeah, and sure, yeah. what everybody else has done before me. yeah i was gonna say like a lot of the personal trainers out there like just it's kind of just personal knowledge like it's personal experience i think it's kind of cool for you to bring like a more like a scientific aspect like a lot of the personal yeah. trainers now they do have a lot of knowledge and like they're really smart guys but they're like yeah. they're bodybuilders and they have lots of experience but it'd be nice for someone like you to come in with like the actual scientific and medical like, yeah. uh point of view on it sure yeah that's kind of that's kind of my thought process too um there's a few guys doing that now um but uh, as with anything the the field that field is always evolving so with the new education coming out it's it's nice to see how advanced it's going to get yeah, and, and I think that's the one thing about like just bodybuilding in general. Like, there's always something to learn. Like, you're never really gonna know everything, you know. So, exactly. that, that that's what I find interesting because you can always kind of find something that like is interesting or like is new that you don't know about. So, one one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just I just had another topic, but if you want to finish on that, that's all good. Oh no, man, that that's a good place to leave off. If you got some right. questions, I'm gonna um, dive into them. Yeah, I'm just thinking about, like, so obviously, like, we're kind of on social media a bit, but, like, what would you say, like, like, social media, like, how has that helped you kind of with your, like, business and stuff like that? Social media for me primarily is just free marketing. Um, So, TikTok, obviously, uh, most of my income right now comes from TikTok. Um, Yeah. Or most of my clients I get via TikTok. Um, And then same with Instagram as well, though it's a little bit slower of a platform. Um. But it's always just been kind of free marketing for me. Um, and, and it's in kind of a, uh, what's it called? A, a personal sense too. It's nice to track your progress. So it's nice to look back on things you've posted two, three years ago and be like, hey, I, I've come, come a long way since then. 
Um, it's also nice to see for, for potential clients to look back on that as well and say, oh, he's gained, say, 10, 15 pounds of muscle in the last two years. He must know something. That's um, true, yeah. So yeah, it's just really, they're both really good platforms just to put out little kind of tidbits of information. Um, not so much to just prove your worth, but one, to share some free information with everybody that may help. And two, to kind of attract potential clients that, that might be interested in your style of training or your style of nutrition, etc. I agree with that 100%. I mean, we just kind of started in TikTok there, but it's definitely a platform where like, the growth can be quick for sure. Yeah, it's way it's way easier. Like for Instagram, like I think we only have like a hundred followers or something. But TikTok, we'd be getting like sixty five hundred views or like three thousand views. It's like way easier for the for your like for you to start yeah. off. And you if you post like good stuff, like it can pretty easily blow up. So it's yeah. it's awesome that way. Yeah, it picks up quick. I was checking out your guys' page on TikTok actually right before we hopped on the call, and that's going growing like phenomenal. Yeah, it went from like three hundred views. Like it's not even like. It's like easy stuff. Like it doesn't take us long. Yeah, right like now we're just making TikTok like in like five minutes, and then it just like, like even like weird. reposting other stuff that we agree with, and that's like relatable. Like people yeah. stuff like that, because we want to do that for now, build up our views, and then eventually just like because we we do implement clips from our YouTube, so we're gonna like keep throwing those in there, but try to like get other stuff that would get us yeah. more views, so we can uh, mix it up that way. Well, it's smart. How, how have you guys been finding YouTube so far? That's that's like the one platform I haven't jumped on yet. Yeah, I mean it's okay. Like. We don't even have a hundred subscribers yet. It's just a very slow, like it's a very yeah. slow grind on YouTube. Like watch time, when like, you look at what, like yeah, our watch, watch time is really good. Like, it's like, or like it's we, like the people that that actually watch, like watch it a lot, but yeah. there's not that many people. Is like it? some of our videos have like eight hundred views, some of them have like seventy. So it's not like, <laughs> like yeah. I don't know, it's hard to. But like like we said, like some people like it's either you love it and you watch the full video, or you're watching like none of yeah. it or you're watching like two minutes because i find there's some people especially on our youtube like when we like when we first started we used to get a lot of views because like people thought it was funny that we had like a podcast and stuff like that yeah. so then they'll watch and then kind of like slowly those people like it's not really funny anymore so they don't really watch that's but cool. like so that's why especially in tiktok thing is we're trying to get into more of like the fitness community yeah. like not just in our area for sure oh absolutely no, it's really smart. No, I know what you mean. Every everybody's very curious at the start to say like, "Oh, is this yeah." Kind of yeah. And then you see they they see you actually succeeding. It's like, "Oh, this could turn into something." Exactly. And then nobody wants to watch anymore once it's like actually. <laughs> well, that's the thing we're trying to get away from because locally, like, because we're actually getting. It's funny. The better people we get on, like the less. It's almost like the less views we get because locally, like, the, which is where most of our viewers come from. It's like they see like a bodybuilder on, but it's like they, they'd rather watch someone they know. Just yeah. as a kind of as a joke, but like that's why we're trying to get more on TikTok yeah. to get like actually in the communities. Because and I'm, I mean it's it's common for sure. Like you can see like once we're getting more bodybuilding guests on, and like they're slowly getting more views. And well, I think sure. like YouTube is definitely um, a good like main kind of base for us. But I think we need to like really grow the TikTok and things like that to like because you don't really blow up on YouTube. No, it's hard. Song. It's tough. Not anymore. No. Uh, it's like, like, back, back in the day, you could, but. Yeah, I mean, exactly. now like YouTube doesn't really like share your videos. I find like the chance that you're actually going to see it is very slim. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty flooded community, and I, I know yeah. even as soon as there's that initial interest that people really yeah. like the kind of comedy factor. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's that's kind of how I started off on TikTok too, was posting just kind of like gym comedy videos. And then about a year ago now, um, that's where I built the bulk of my following too. And then about a year ago now. I switched to kind of the more educational side side videos. And initially after switching down to that, that the kind of comedy factor dropped and my views plummeted. And it's just now kind of starting to crawl back. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny. I've gotten a couple of years on my For You page and he was telling me about you. And I like, I just started getting videos on my For You page. I'm like, this guy's an all, this guy's smart. Like, this guy's yeah, awesome. I love your content. And, but I know what you mean. Like people kind of like, it's a comedy factor and eventually that goes away. But I mean, yeah. I mean, if you can use that to like, because realistically, sometimes people like, like I know myself, if I see a TikTok that has like one like, I'm probably not going to like it. Like I might just continue, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, you, you don't want to be that like first person to actually invest in the, in the content. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird, it's weird because it's like, why does it matter? But it's just kind of like a human thing, I think. It's one, of the, one of those subconscious things and it's like, it shouldn't matter, but it kind of, kind of feels like it does. So I think that's like what if you build up kind of a funny like meme fan base and then you start putting out real content, people are like, 
like maybe your fans aren't going to like that, but then other people see that and then they're like, okay, well he has, you know, 30,000 followers. So I'm going to like that too, you know? That's kind of what I, that was kind of my thought process switching over. I, I did the, I did the stuff that would get you followers very easy and quickly yeah. first. And then, yeah, that's that's what we're trying to do. yeah, so that it gets a little bit more exposure than just starting off right off the bat on exactly. the kind of, and I think it's so boring stuff. Yeah. And I think, um, like just social media is so important to try like just even just to make it like in the in the fitness industry because it's really just like if you have no following like the chances that a company is going to give you a code or like is really slim big time yeah even even being like a personal trainer too like if you're not out there on social media somehow it's like you're not going to get people aren't going to find you credible even if you're a really smart guy and you're like a big guy if you don't have a big presence on social media or you're not like posting on tiktok or instagram people don't trust you as much which is bad but that's the reality on yeah. your side. you're 100 percent right like it, it it seems kind of uh seems kind of dumb to stay say but almost like likes and follow followers on yeah. tiktok and instagram now give you a certain sense of credibility yeah, especially yeah. when it comes to like you were saying mad about uh like brands starting to work with you and stuff um i found that even though i was posting great content from or great content that i i the content i thought was great at the yeah, time yeah. on uh instagram it, it really didn't matter because it just wasn't worth the brand investing in me if they weren't going to get any return on it they'd just be losing money so so i completely see where you're coming from on that front and agree yeah and i mean it's unfortunate because like realistically like it doesn't matter how many likes you get on a picture but like it just kind of like uh i don't know how to explain it but it just like technically if if you think about it like the real world that doesn't really matter but Unfortunately, that's kind of the world that we live in where it does matter and you can make a career out of it if you have to, you know? Oh, 100%. Like, if that's your primary source of income, like, yeah. as stressful as it is to say, the likes and the likes and the views do matter in that in that sense. So, like, after, like, do you have any plans for after university? Like, do you want to become a doctor and then, like, do a uh, personal training on the side, like, if you have time? Or? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So, so I'll rate my MCATs after next year, so probably in this coming winter. Um, see if I get into any med schools. I'm applying to McMaster and Dalhousie. Um, so see if I get in there, polish off my med degree, um, and then definitely keep going with that doctorate degree, but uh, use all the information I gained there to transfer over into my online coaching. That's yeah, awesome. I think that's a really good approach. That's fine. I appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of the people I look up to in the fitness industry, they they took that route too. They didn't necessarily take the doctorate in anything, but they definitely went down the the more medical scientific based route. Um, and that's kind of, I, I want to kind of follow in their footsteps because I really like the content they produce. I see how many people they've helped and I kind of want to do the same thing with my life. Um, Good for sure. I think like it's often like, I think there's some, you know, not to hate on anybody, but there are some personal trainers that really like are don't really know what they're doing you know and it's unfortunate because like I think the people that truly have a passion like if you get if you're with like a coach or a, or a personal trainer that really like cares about it you're going to be so much better off. oh man 100 percent. no knowing knowing that a coach or whoever's handling your diet training supplementation etc is actually invested in wanting to see you do well and it's not just about the paycheck is is yeah. huge um and not only does it instill some confidence in the clients too it ensures them that they actually care what's going on so if they don't get the results that they're looking for the coach is unhappy as well and they're going to do something to fix that exactly yeah i agree i think it's like because if you get a coach that you're i think anytime you have a coach you should 100 percent trust them like i mean obviously up to a certain point like if they really take like three grams of trend like okay maybe not but you know, yeah like <laughs> You gotta believe one of those things that you oh sorry, go for it. You go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I definitely agree. I think honesty and dependability are some of like the best qualities in a coach. Yeah. Um actually I, I posted a TikTok about that not too long ago. Um had a had a little bit of an altercation with another coach who I who I won't name. Um but he, he got very, very angry and lashed out at a couple of people in his comment section, mm-hmm. some of which were his clients at the time. Um, so I just think that's a prime example that, that credibility matters when you're a coach um, and able to explain things to your client in a, in a very user-friendly, um, scientifically backed and, yeah. and kind way 
is a very important quality to have. And, and like you said, it really all comes down to trust. If you can't trust your coach and their, their decisions of what to do with your body, you yeah. probably find a better coach. That, yeah, I agree. Because like, realistically, it's your body. Like if your coach, if you, if your coach tells you to eat this every day and you know that, that, that like maybe you shouldn't be eating this and then like, maybe you'll eat it, but then you're going to start to have doubt and that's just going to build like a little wedge between you. And I think, especially, I mean, if you're like, uh, getting ready for a competition like you need to trust that your coach is doing what he needs to be doing you know 100 percent, 100 yeah and there's like no problem in like paying for like a big name but like i feel like like the bigger the name the like the person is you're paying more and it's almost like they might have more clients so like they'd have less time for you they'd be less invested in what you yeah. want so like yeah. yes you're paying for a big name they're probably a smart guy but they're probably less invested in what you want and like how you, they, they'll care less about like how you do and, and sadly, so a lot, a, a lot of the times that's the case too, is just that these people, they, they have so many clients on their hands, which is awesome for them. Um, but sometimes clients do, other clients do get overlooked. Um, and not to mention the, the drastic financial commitment to actually get a big name coach too, because yeah. their, their time is just so valuable. It's crazy. I mean, some people pay like ridiculous amounts for coaching and then like, if you're not going to really reap the benefits, it's not worth it. You know? Yeah, no, 100%. It, uh, I, I think that's, that, that's kind of the point where followers and likes and stuff could be detrimental to like a coaching career. Um, that I see a lot of guys blow up. One, because they have really good physiques or two, because they're just very good at social media and they don't necessarily have the credibility and knowledge behind their name to actually support the client load they're taking on. I, I um, agree. Yeah. And, and then you get... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and then you get a bunch of clients sign up thinking that they're going to get the best plans in the world because the said coach has an amazing physique and it just doesn't work out that way because either one, they don't have the genetics or two, the coach doesn't have the knowledge to support them. Yeah. And I think that happens a lot. I mean, especially just with like the fitness influencer, like there's all these people that like are on Instagram and they look crazy good and then like, okay, buy my workout plan or like, I'll coach you, but it's like, do you really know what you're doing or are you just have really good genetics? And yeah. I mean, not, not genetics, but like you just look good and now you think that you can coach people, you know, that's not really how it works. I, I think that's, I think that's another funny topic you bring up too. Cause I, I don't know if you guys have seen the, uh, the kind of TikTok scandal. Oh yeah. 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 Like yeah. Alex and yeah. Hottie. Uh, yeah. yeah. Alex and Hottie and all the raw gear athletes, uh, yeah. shopping their videos now too. Yeah. Um, I think that's just another prime example of kind of like the extents people will go to to show that they have a good physique just for that. Yeah. And like they definitely have great physiques too. So they, they're important. just changing them. Like, like they're making them a little bit better, but exactly. like, like without the Photoshop, they still look sick. Like there's, oh, they definitely do. Exactly. And I think that's an unfortunate part because like Alex Eubank, like he looks crazy with, without the Photoshop. Agreed. So now he says, now he's been caught using Photoshop and now he's way less credible than yeah. he was before. Oh, 100 percent. Um, so it, it's kind of funny to see how it turns too, because that that Photoshop made him, even though he had a great physique beforehand, it made him a little bit more credible because he looked a little bit better on social media. And now it's funny to see how the tables are turning once he loses that credibility exactly. due to the same thing that made him credible in the first place. Yeah, and I think that's that's what you you can't really always trust what you see. Like, yeah. like there could be something that's just really good at Photoshop, and then you're and then that person's coaching you and then they get exposed and you're like, well, who am I, you know, why was I being coached by this person? Oh, 100%. Man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny. I used to watch like a lot of Greg, you said, I don't watch him as much, but he, he used to have a scale and he said like, it was like how good looking and how good your physique is. Doesn't like, he was saying like, oh, this guy looks unreal. So more people are going to pay for his plans and stuff. And he was like looking at, what was that guy's name? Um, v Shred. And like, he used to be, yeah. he used to always shit on V Shred because he's like, Yes, he's a good looking guy. He's really handsome. He's like, and he's, yes, he's shredded, but like, does he know as much as he says he knows? Like, exactly. and he's, yeah. he always talks about the scale. And like, it, it's funny because like, it, just because just you have a good physique or just because you're good looking doesn't mean you know your stuff. So. Oh, 100%. And it, uh, I, I completely agree with them on that front. Some of some of the stuff that uh, that V Shred guy was posting was just uh, out, was out in left field. I used uh, to get that stuff all the time. Like when I was first lifting and his videos would come on, like him outside by the pool. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 I, I remember when I first got into actual serious lifting or, or what I thought was serious lifting. 
Uh, I was like 15, 16 at the time when I got my first GM membership. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember, if you guys know Mike Chang from Six Pack Shortcuts. Uh, I think I do. <laughs> yeah. And and he was like the peak of the fitness industry at that time. Yeah. Um, him, uh, there's C.T. Fletcher and there's Cali Muscle too. And they were all like the peak of the fitness industry. And that's all I watched on YouTube. Yeah. And now looking back on it, I like same with the V Shred situation. I was like, I, I really listen to those guys. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because especially like the younger you are, like the more your brain is like, you know, like, I don't know what the word is, but like, more like impressionable. Exactly. Yeah. Impressionable. So, I mean, like, realistically, when you're like, like, I remember watching the How to Get a Six by 10, 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I used to run that like every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like you really just like when you're a kid you don't really think about like no 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 true, right? you, don't, you don't really have you don't really have enough knowledge yet to really apply any any logic to figure these you things you see out. the likes and you see like the hey, like oh this got oh my god one million views. Right. Must be, yeah i'm getting a six pack in 10 minutes let's come exactly. 100 percent. not i was doing the same thing back back in the day like these guys were saying oh you need 30 sets of workout for your arms so yeah. like okay this must be what i have to do or you can't work eat after i think that's what mike chang was saying you can't eat after 8 p.m or something like that oh yeah there used to be that you'll get fat if you eat after yeah. 8 p.m yeah. And well, like anabolic window. Yeah, yeah with anabolic, the anabolic window. window and now we know with all like the literature that's out now that it's just it's all kind of bullshit that <laughs> they were they were pushing or it's like you got to eat 800 grams. The more protein, the more muscle you're going to get. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, it was. it's just funny to look back on how social media has kind of evolved over the past, even like the past five years um, and all like the, the big names in the industry five years ago and kind of picked through all the pieces of missing. And even like, I feel like 10 years from now, we'll probably look back at this day and age and be like, some of this shit that says gets said right now is probably bullshit too. Like, Exactly. You never know. Like you look back, and there's always new science. There's That's always the new stuff out. So. That's the thing I love about Twitter. There's always new things coming out, so it's always like changing. It's always evolving. Oh, 100 percent. Like now, like it's a, it's a weird, it's a good topic for you as well. Like a lot of people, like just the dark side of fitness. A lot of people, a lot of bodybuilders are dying, or they're dying at young ages. Yeah, and crazy. I feel like that, that that never really got portrayed social media like a, like a while ago, but now it's coming out like a lot, and people. Yeah. And I feel like it's kind of interesting because you you have a more of a scientific approach, and you're like going into medicine too. So like, what's your opinion on that? Like, is there a balance between like getting like an unreal physique and like blasting a trend or something, and like? like being healthy there's oh, there's yes and no so there's obviously degrees to that balance um and it might be unpopular and frowned upon to say it but if you truly want to be great at something the, the kind of concept of balance should just be completely thrown out the window yeah, yeah, you're yeah. never going to get extremely good at something with balance in your life yeah, exactly. and i think that's very apparent with all like sad to say it but all the bodybuilders dying now um, they had, they all had incredible physiques, um, oh, yeah. incre incredibly young ages too. Um, but obviously there was no balance in their life. Um, and we're just kind of starting to see now the, the cascading downsides to everything that it takes to be a IFBB pro level bodybuilder. Um, and although it's very sad that we have had so many deaths, especially recently in the past four or five months from bodybuilding, I think it is a good warning or good indication to people that like, hey, this, you really have to weigh the consequences of bodybuilding now because th this shit we're doing is not good for you. No, um, yeah. Yeah, it's like it, not, nothing about it either. There's like pushing, pushing calories up to 6,000 calories a day, 7,000 calories a day, that's not good for you. Obviously, anabolic androgenic steroids are going to have a, a tremendous downside because kind of body mass is the number one indicator of mortality in any species the bigger the yeah. bigger the animal is the quicker they die even if it yeah. even if it's like it doesn't matter if it's fat or muscle like if you have exactly. that much body mass it's going to have more of an impact on your heart, heart. your heart so exactly. yeah not only your heart where you see left ventricular hypertrophy which is just basically the growth of your heart because you have to pump so much blood volume through your body each and every day um you're seeing tremendous dam regulation in hdl and ldl ratios of cholesterol um, seeing even some bone issues now with osteoporosis and some, um, peptides, which is kind of, kind of freaky because I, I'm a diabetic, obviously insulin's incredibly safe. Um, but using peptides for such a prolonged period of time, you, it kind of makes you wonder like, Hey, how, how is this really going to play out in 10, 10 or 10 decades, two, three, four decades? 
Um, so it's, it, it's scary seeing everybody pass away, but it's in a sense, it's good. It's a good indicator to everybody else that we might have to start being a little bit smarter and a little bit more careful with the things we're doing to our body. I understand agree. Cause I mean, like, as soon as you introduce like any, like, you know, stare any, any like hormone affecting agent, it's not going to be healthy. That's a guarantee, but there's a way to do it where it's like, it's not healthy, it's healthy, it's healthy but than- like, it's, cause I think there's some guys in the bodybuilding industry that are like, if I'm doing it. I'm going all in. Like, I'm just going to yep. take a whole bunch of gear. I'm not going to care about my blood work and stuff. And I mean, that's just not a realistic approach. Like you can go all in, but you still need to be healthy. I mean, one hundred percent, and uh, I don't think people are really. And I know I wasn't when I when I started anabolic androgenic steroids, um, but I don't think people are really aware of of everything they can actually do, both positive or negative. Um, and that that's it's funny you bring up blood work too. Um, I was actually just revising some blood work with a client earlier today, and that's one of the things I always always preach: natural or unnatural clients. Um, People know people in this day and age know more about their car than they do about what's going on in their actual. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, like, I, I'm. I'm not sure. Do you? Do you guys have cars right now? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Do oh. you ever check? Do you ever check the dipstick in your 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 car? Check the oil. Yeah. Yeah. Once yeah. Nobody checks the oil in their body. Nobody gets the blood work done. So so really, there's no way to know what's actually going on in there without getting it. Um, and see, seeing bodybuilders and, or any sports performance athlete for that matter, neglect blood work, just the, the most basic. Yeah. Like, it's just like, why, 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 like, why wouldn't you get it? You know? It's one of those things. Like, like we have, free, I, I know we're all in Canada. We have free healthcare. It costs absolutely nothing for me to walk in get my blood work done and then walk out and see, see what happens. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think some of the people that like that are bodybuilders are smart they know the sacrifice they're making. Like, some people are even open about it. They're telling you, like, I know that I know the benefit, I know the benefits, but I also know the downsides of this. Like, but some people just go into it, like you said, and they're just yeah. like, screw it. Like, I'm going all in. If I want to do well, I have to blast all this. And they don't even look at their health at all. And I feel yeah. like I don't want to say those are people that are gonna die young, but it's like it's kind of it's a lot higher if you're not caring about your blood work your blood work or like your health at all. Cause like yeah. I feel like obviously there's different levels of it. Like I feel like to a certain extent it is healthy, like if you're just if you're doing your cardio and you're like doing certain stuff, like it's, it's healthy as it can be. It's health, as healthy as it can be. But like if you're blasting stuff, you're not doing any cardio and you're just like, like you said, you're eating 8,000 calories and you're just like huge. It's like, obviously it's not good in your heart. It's not good. Like you said, maybe bone structure or something. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's just not good for your body. Your body's not meant to that. No, not, not at all. And it's, it's funny you bring up cardio too, because that's one of the things that nobody's doing that can help reduce yeah. some of the effects of anabolic or side effects of anabolic androgenic steroids is just do your cardio keep keep your cardiovascular health healthy and like um, yeah like, like i feel like it's like really down like people look at it really badly and like i even used to say this joke i get around saying like oh cardio is pussies but now i look back and like i'm an idiot like yeah, have to, yeah it doesn't matter how big you or how much you're trained you still have to do cardio because like oh, i don't want i don't want to get up grow up and be like really big and have terrible cardio health and like my heart being not proportional to like how big I am. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm 100% on the same page. Like I made that mistake for the first probably four years of my training before I actually clued in like, Hey, this might actually be good for me going for a walk on the treadmill two, three times a week. Um, but yeah, 100%. It's one of those things that one of those very simple things that people can do just to make an, a small incremental change towards being a healthier individual, no matter, no matter what you're taking, no matter what you're eating. Yeah, I agree. And I think like sometimes people kind of neglect like little things, you know, like maybe stretch for five minutes yeah. before you go to bed or yeah. you know, just something like that. It's like, like little tiny things can make a big difference for your body, whether that be good or bad. Big time. Even drinking water. Yeah. yeah. All the people, I've been drinking off there. They don't eat it off there. It's it, yeah, no, you're, you're 100% right. Like when it comes to stuff like that, especially when PEDs come into the quiet, come into question, it's, it's 100% all the little things you do in your daily life and just accumulation of those little things that are definitely going to keep you being a healthier individual as you use them or as you train and get older. Yeah. yeah. Some, I mean, as soon as you put those in, you know, um, it's not going to be healthy, obviously, but you got, you got to make it as healthy as possible. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, when some people hop on the PEDs, they just completely like 
just disregard everything else. Like they stopped doing cardio, they stopped doing everything else. They're like, I'm gonna be unhealthy. Why would I even bother? But like obviously you can't like obviously you're not gonna be healthy, but doing it like more healthy than other people is yeah. gonna prolong your life. Doing it, doing it with the the kind of thought in the back of your head of hey, I want to try to mitigate these side effects as much as I can. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> and I think one of the things that a lot of people need to understand is like after you're done competing, like you still need to be alive. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And that's that. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. I cut out for a little bit there. Go oh, ahead, yeah. No, he, he didn't hear. Oh, he didn't hear. I just said you got to be able to like enjoy your life after, you know. Oh. 100 percent no that's that's kind of what i i think of law a lot of people forget is that there's yes the whatever bodybuilding show you commit to is the end goal but there's going to be another end goal after that if you completely deteriorate your body during that prep that there's no next stage like you're you're done you're out of competition for four months five months until you have to recover and then by then you're you're starting at square one almost all over again yeah i don't know if you know like do you know johnny shreve we had yeah. him on we had him on here and he was saying that like he was even telling us like he said he, he's got he's in the bodybuilding right now but he said he's gonna try to get get out as quick as he can like he said like obviously he's gonna do it he's gonna try to get the like he's gonna try to get popular on social media make a career out of it and then get out of bodybuilding and like yeah. still have the platform and still be able to make money out of it 100 percent, and i think that's a it, johnny's completely right in that sense like I have no intention of bodybuilding past like my early, early thirties. Um, yeah, exactly. Like I'll still, I'll still work out by all means. Oh, yeah, exactly. It might, it might not just be bodybuilding and it's definitely not going to be competitive bodybuilding. Um, Cause it's one of the, it's one of those things, although I'd like to do it, I definitely have some other commitments in my life that take priority. Um, and I think that's one of the things people don't think about when pursuing bodybuilding is that you want to have kids when you're older, you yeah. want to be financially stable too um you want to live past the age of 50 to see your grandkids and kids grow up um, and be there for them and and all those things need to be taken in con- into consideration when talking about bodybuilding because like it or not it's an extremely selfish sport um yeah. not just in the sense of kind of time management but in the sense of you're deteriorating your own health for a very internalized kind of kind of goal and that's obviously going to have a big effect on your family when you're not around in say 50 years. And I, I think it's like, eventually you kind of have to weigh like what's more important to you. Like you want to be alive to see your like family grow up or you want to maybe win a Mr. Olympia, you know? And I mean, to some people for sure, the Mr. Olympia can be more important, but it just kind of, you have to decide what's, what's more important for you. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. And I think that's a decision you, you should probably make pretty early on in, in your career too. Like within the first three to five years of training or taking performance enhancing drugs, you should know, hey, do I have the genetics or the capacity to actually do something with it? Um, that's a very personal kind of marginal decision to make because if you decide that you don't, what's really the point in continuing if you know it's going to deteriorate your health and you're probably pretty sure you're never going to win a trophy at a, at a pro show. Um, it's really at, at that point, coming back to social media, it's more for a, an image for yourself to kind of push your financial benefits. And I think that's um, one thing, like, eventually you kind of realize, I've seen, like, on social media, some bodybuilders realize, okay, maybe I'm not going to turn pro, maybe I'm not going to win a pro show, maybe it's time to, you know, hang it up and worry yeah. about it, you know, because, I mean, eventually things become more yeah, all one hundred percent. And it doesn't mean you have to quit working out as a whole. It just means like maybe, maybe going off the like yeah. PDs maybe you're not or whatever. Calories yeah. anymore, you know? Or, or you, yeah, exactly. Or it could be going off PEDs. Could be eating a little bit less, managing your diet better, exactly. doing your cardio, or even not completely going off PEDs entirely. Just making smarter choices about yes. this. Yeah, because exactly. you can get you can get a lot from a, a very small amount when it comes to PEDs um like we we actually know in clinical medicine usually one milligram of a drug behaves better than say two um but there's a thir- certain threshold you actually have to take in order to induce the the response you're looking for um and that's very apparent in things like um I'm trying to think of the example um antibiotics um, yeah. very apparent in antibiotics um but it applies to peds as well um so you can take 500 milligrams of testosterone, 
but each of those 500 milligrams is going to behave slightly less effectively than each milligram of say 250. Um, and I think people fail to realize that there, there's that rate of diminishing returns where, where more isn't always better. Um, and I think people fail to realize also that you can get a lot from a very, very small amount. So, so it could come down to one of those things. Just don't come off entirely. Just take less and be smarter. Yeah, you know I mean, like, it's, you know, you're always like, maybe if you want to take 800 milligrams of trend, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to gain more muscle than if you took like 400. Exactly. Yeah. But you exactly. might get way worse side effects. Yeah, well, 100%. Um, and like, it, inherently drug course and half life or drug course and half life drug course and cycle length is ultimately determined by survivability and we know that drugs are inherently bad for you um so the more you take obviously the less you're going to survive them so not only will taking more lead to more side effects it's also going to reduce the time in which you can use those drugs um, and if we know that you don't need much to get a decent amount of results why wouldn't you just take less for slightly longer, yeah. same, if not better results and stay at a better physiological health standpoint? And realistically, I mean, all we've been talking about, it all comes to longevity. Like the, long, like the longer you can do something, the more you're going to enjoy it. And hopefully, the, like, I mean, up to a certain point, the less you're going to deteriorate your body. Big time. Big time. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, been I really awesome. Appreciate you guys having me on. It uh, it was a pleasure meeting you guys, and uh, hopefully yeah. we'll be in touch again soon. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks good, man. man. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.